So hello my dears, it's uh, Sunday today, quite a nice weather and uh, we are going to talk today about uh, a very important uh, uh, time in Russian history. We are going to talk about the revolution. A uh, long time ago uh, we used to say that uh, our city is the cradle of three revolutions and it's true, uh, we had three revolutions in this city, uh, but you probably know only one revolution, October Revolution, or at least heard about it. And uh, we start today with the uh, first Russian Revolution, and it started here. Uh, it started on the Palace Square. We uh, call this uh, historical event uh, Bloody Sunday. So it was a Sunday uh, on the 9th of January of 1905 um, when lots of people came on this square and uh, they were dressed in their Sunday best. Uh, those people were mostly workers. Uh, lots of them were with their families, even with children. And uh, they were headed by the priest uh, Georgi Gapun. He actually managed to organize this uh, uh, demonstration. It was totally peaceful demonstration. Uh, people were uh, carrying uh, icons, they were carrying portraits of the Tsar. And they just uh, brought the petition to the Tsar. They wanted to have uh, a dialogue. They were absolutely sure that the Tsar, Nicholas II, was in the palace, in the Winter Palace, in his residence. They had uh, no idea that the Tsar was away. He was not in the palace uh, at that very uh, moment. And uh, they brought that petition. Petition was about improving their living conditions, working conditions, and also it had some political issues as well. Anyway, the Tsar uh, didn't see that petition. People came here to the square, it was a big crowd, and the troops uh, that guarded the Winter Palace, uh, they won uh, this uh, demonstration three times uh, to leave the square, people were uh, standing on the square and they didn't move. So uh, those troops started firing people. 96 uh, people uh, lay dead and more than 300 people were badly wounded. This uh, event uh, uh, went down into the Russian history as the Bloody Sunday. And uh, after the Bloody Sunday, um, after 1905, uh, the strikes and revolutionary uh, demonstrations started happening uh, throughout the whole country. And uh, this situation lasted for two years, from 1905 till 1907. And uh, the situation in Russia was really, really unstable. But this uh, first Russian Revolution uh, ended with a defeat, and uh, lots of revolutionaries had to immigrate. So now we are on the field of Mars. The field of Mars was named after the god of war Mars. In the early 18th century, it was used for military parades. And uh, it was uh, not that green as uh, today. It was pretty dusty and it was even called Saqqara Desert. Late in the 19th century, it was used for festivities and uh, fairs. Uh, but uh, after the February Revolution's uh, events, the common grave appeared here. Eight, uh, 180 soldiers were uh, buried uh, in the central part of the field of Mars. 800,000 people, it's hard to believe that so many people uh, were at the time uh, during the funeral procession. 
And uh, uh, the common grave was arranged uh, here, and uh, two years later, an austere monument appeared here, designed by uh, Lev Rudnev. Much later, in 1957, eternal flame was uh, lit uh, in the middle of the field of Mars. So here we can see the eternal flame. Actually, it's the first eternal flame that appeared in Leningrad. Talking about the events of the Fabre Revolution, well, we should remember that uh, it started on the 23rd of uh, February, uh, quite uh, uh, rapidly, uh, and uh, the problems uh, already started in the very beginning of 1917. It started with the uh, interruptions of bread delivery in Petrograd. Then uh, the lockout uh, at Putilov plant uh, uh, happened uh, and 30,000 workers uh, uh, were fired and uh, it was a shock for working people. So uh, workers uh, came out in the streets of uh, Petrograd and uh, the revolution started. On the 25th of uh, uh, February, uh, by the decision um, of the State Duma, uh, the Petrograd garrison arrived uh, and the Petrograd garrison uh, soldiers uh, were supposed to suppress this demonstration. But what was really unexpected thing, the soldiers of Petrograd garrison took the side of protesters. And uh, on the 27th of February, in Torida Palace, uh, two governments uh, were formed. One of them was the uh, Provisional Committee of uh, the State Duma, and another one was the Council of Soldiers and Workers' Deputies. And then later, on the th 2nd of March, the Tsar Nicholas II, Emperor of Russia, got abdicated. He abdicated in favor of his brother, Michael, but Michael refused to take the power, so he also abdicated. After overthrown of monarchy, people were just very, very excited. Uh, it happened not only in uh, uh, Petrograd, also in Moscow, but um, during clashes uh, um, that took place in uh, February uh, revolution in Petrograd, lots of people were uh, hurt or killed. Uh, according to, the, uh, to investigation, more than 1,000 people were uh, killed. While in Moscow, this February Revolution uh, occurred uh, in a lighter uh, form, and uh, uh, lots of uh, policemen uh, took the side of uh, demonstrators, uh, and the sign of the February Revolution was this red ribbon. And uh, even policemen uh, put this red ribbon on the chest and they proclaimed themselves as uh, victims of the old regime. So we are standing in front of the Finland terminal, uh, just on the square. And uh, to the left-hand side, you see the monument to Vladimir Lenin, Bolsheviks leader. This monument to Lenin was unveiled in 1926. And it reminds us of uh, a very important event that happened uh, on the 3rd of April of 1917. Vladimir Lenin, a political immigrant, uh, arrived by train at that very terminal, at Finlandsky terminal, Finland Railway Station. 
Uh, he spent 10 years in immigration in Switzerland and from Switzerland through Germany, through Finland, leaning with other uh, revolutionaries, arrived uh, at uh, Petrograd. At that time, the city was called Petrograd. Lenin was met by uh, his comrades, sailors, workers and soldiers. And uh, on that very day, on the 3rd of April, from the turret of the armored car, Lenin held his quite famous speech. And he was talking about the political situation in Russia at that very moment. Uh, he was talking about the results of the February Revolution. And uh, he said that uh, we have to arrange uh, the most decisive uh, part of the revolution, so-called socialist revolution. And he ended his speech with a slogan, Lone Leave Socialist Revolution. Afterwards, Lenin went to the headquarters of Bolsheviks in Kshesinskaya Palace. So behind me we see Kshesinskaya mansion. This is one of the finest palaces, or, uh, finest mansions or, in the center of St. Petersburg. It belonged to quite a famous ballet dancer of Mariinsky Opera and Ballet House, Matilda Kshesinskaya. Matilda for some time was a favorite of Grand Duke Nicholas. And uh, later, this Grand Duke Nicholas became the Russian Emperor Nicholas II. In 1904, some nobleman bought the piece of land where later this palace was built. And uh, some time uh, later, uh, people found out that this beautiful mansion belongs to Matilda Kshesinskaya. She was a famous ballet dancer, she was one of the wealthiest women of her time, and uh, uh, she was also a favorite uh, of uh, Grand Duke Andrei Vladimirovich. Matilda lived in this palace until February 1917 with her son. But in February of 1917, uh, during the February Revolution, she had to leave this palace and uh, sometime later, in March, this palace happened to be the headquarters of Bolsheviks' party. And when Lenin arrived on the 3rd of April in Petrograd, he uh, came to this palace and it became uh, his office. He worked here, uh, he was holding speeches from this very balcony, and uh, in April, uh, Lenin proclaimed his famous April messages. There were 10 issues in those messages, and uh, the most important uh, were two of them, an issue of war and peace and an issue of land. Lenin perfectly realized that uh, Russian people, ordinary Russian people, were incredibly tired of the First World War, of taking part in this war. And uh, at the same time, Russia was losing the war. So Lenin uh, was calling for immediate uh, ending of um, Russia's participation in this war. And the second issue was also quite important for Russian peasants, an issue of land. Lenin also realized that uh, uh, peasants would be quite happy to get the land. So in his April messages, uh, he was talking about nationalization of banks, uh, nationalization of private property and uh, about uh, giving land to peasants and factory and plants to workers. And uh, one of the key moments uh, of uh, the revolution was Lenin's arrival uh, in April in Petrograd. And, uh, uh, at that time, Bolsheviks' party wasn't that popular and it was quite small. But after Lenin's uh, April messages, Bolsheviks' party became very popular among broad masses of people of Russia.
So behind me we see so-called Torida Palace and right now it's a governmental building where uh, we have the assembly of independent countries. Uh, but uh, in the revolutionary times it was the place where the State Duma and the uh, um, Soviet or Council of Workers and Soldiers Deputy were housed and that uh, period uh, after the uh, abdication of the Zara was so-called uh, dual power. Dual power means that in Petrograd at that time we had uh, two governments. Uh, one of them was the provisional government uh, and another government was the uh, Council or Soviet of Workers and Soldiers Deputies. Uh, and these two governments were absolutely different. The provisional government mostly uh, consisted of uh, uh, the state uh, Duma ministers. Uh, the head of that uh, government was uh, uh, Lvov, and um, that government supported uh, political uh, parties that were kind of uh, liberal so-called right parties uh, and they had no authorities uh, among uh, broad masses of people while the council of workers and soldiers deputies uh, was more popular in the uh, proletarian uh, class uh, among workers and soldiers uh, and uh, uh, that uh, council of workers and soldiers uh, uh, consisted of uh, socialist parties and that was the main difference uh, between these two uh, governments. In June of 1917, uh, there was a very strong political tension uh, in Petrograd and uh, um, first demonstrations uh, started uh, and lots of people came out in the streets uh, with slogans uh, that sounded pretty Bolshevistic. Uh, uh, for example, down with uh, 10 ministers, the capitalists, or uh, down with the war, because people really didn't want to take part in the First World War anymore. And in July, the situation in Petrograd became even worse, and a uh, really big demonstration uh, started on the 4th of July. And, uh, the provisional government suppressed this demonstration and uh, Lenin as Bolsheviks uh, leader was supposed to be arrested uh, because uh, uh, the provisional government accused Vladimir Lenin uh, for spying to Germany in favor of Germany and all other Bolsheviks. So Lenin went on so-called neo-legal uh, position. He had to change five safe uh, apartments or safe houses in uh, Petrograd and uh, his uh, comrades uh, uh, helped him to leave uh, Petrograd for us leave. It's a small village in the north uh, from Petrograd and uh, then Lenin moved to Finland and uh, uh, later uh, the membership of the provisional government uh, was changed uh, and uh, Kerensky, Alexander Kerensky, became the head, uh, the new head of the provisional uh, government. And he tried to strengthen uh, uh, the discipline in the army and uh, uh, he asked General Kornilov uh, to uh, be the commandant-in-chief but uh, General Karnilov, he had other uh, political ambitions as well and uh, some uh, troops uh, that were quite loyal to Karnilov accepted uh, Karnilov's side and it was a big confrontation between uh, uh, the troops that were on the side of the uh, provisional government and Kerensky as it's had and uh, Kornilov. And uh, as a result of that confrontation, Karnilov uh, was uh, named as a rebel and uh, he was arrested. And uh, this Karnilov's uh, uh, offensive um, led to the uh, great popu popularity of Bolsheviks uh, party. 
and Bolsheviks party became more and more uh, popular. And already in the end of September, uh, Leo Trotsky had the um, Council of Workers and Soldiers uh, and uh, they started working out the uh, armed uprising that took place later in Petrograd. So behind me we see a legendary cruise Aurora over there. And this cruise Aurora is a battleship. It was launched in 1900. It was built here in St. Petersburg in the new Admiralty. Aurora took part in the uh, Russian-Japanese war, the Battle of Tsushima. And then later, uh, during the revolution, on 25th of October in 1917, the cruise Aurora made its uh, famous uh, blank shoot as a start for storming the Winter Palace. At that time, on the 25th of October, Aurora wasn't actually here. It was nearby Nikolaevsky Bridge. And from there, Aurora made uh, its blank shot. It happened at 9.45 in the evening. And uh, after the Winter Palace was occupied, the ministers of the provisional government were arrested in the Winter Palace and uh, then they were uh, taken to the political prison. On the 26th of October of 1917, the Second Congress of all Soviets of Russia uh, took place in Smolny, where the revolution was conceived and uh, the Soviet government was proclaimed with Lenin as its head. A new epoch started in Russia. So when we talk about the October Revolution, we usually uh, talk about the storming of the Winter Palace. Uh, and uh, lots of people saw the documentary, it looks like a documentary, they saw the movie by Sergei Eisenstein, October. But it's a movie and it was uh, shot by quite a famous film director. So lots of people thought that it's a documentary and uh, this is how the Winter Palace was uh, stormed, but in reality it wasn't stormed like in Eisenstein movie. And uh, uh, on the 25th of October uh, on, uh, at uh, 9.45 uh, the cruise Aurora made its famous blank shot as a start uh, for storming the Winter Palace. And uh, it was the sign, right? So afterwards, uh, the Winter Palace was uh, occupied. It wasn't actually stormed. Uh, of course, the Winter Palace was guarded. It was guarded by a female battalion, and uh, it was guarded also by cadets. And at that time, in the Winter Palace, uh, there were 18 ministers of the provisional government. Um, uh, they were expecting something. They knew that uh, sooner or later something would happen uh, and uh, they were sitting having a meeting in their white dining room. And uh, soon after the uh, shot of Aurora, the storm of the Winter Palace started and uh, uh, when the sailors and soldiers entered the uh, uh, Winter Palace, uh, they uh, arrested the ministers of the provisional government uh, and uh, there was not even any firefight. Uh, the firefight was outside the Winter Palace. Uh, cadets uh, who guarded uh, the ministers of the provisional government simply didn't dare to start any uh, firefight. So uh, ministers were arrested and uh, put into political prison.
So this uh, yellow building with white columns in classical style behind me is Smolny. It's one of the governmental buildings now, where the governor's office is situated. And a long time ago, in October of 1917, Smolny became the center of all political events that were happening in Petrograd. This is the place where the October Revolution was conceived by Vladimir Lenin. Lenin arrived at Smolny on 24th of October, and on 25th of October, the uprising uh, took place in Petrograd. The Winter Palace uh, was stormed and the provisional government was arrested. And uh, the next day, the Congress, it was the second Congress of all Russia's uh, Soviets, um, was uh, uh, here, it was held here. And uh, as a result, uh, two Lenin's decrees were adopted, a decree on peace and uh, a decree on land. And uh, the Soviet uh, government, uh, was uh, formed by Vladimir Lenin and uh, he became the head of the Soviet government. So the new epoch in the history, not only of this city, but of the whole country started, that lasted for quite many years. And uh, within this day, you've heard about the first Russian revolution that started with the Bloody Sunday in 1905. You've heard about the events of February Revolution of 1917. And you've also heard about the uh, last October Revolution. And it was like the last stage uh, in all those three revolutions. And I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you.